Hey everybody, it's ZM, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Last time we arrived in Rito Village, and as you can tell, it's snowing pretty hard here because of the giant hurricane that's taking place within the Hebrew region, and we're here to get to the bottom of it. But before I do that, let's go ahead and take on the shrine that's located here, as it will also give us easy access to teleport back to this village whenever we please. And even though the snow is hazardous for the Rito and the village itself, I can't deny that I really like it, as it gives this village such a cozy vibe, and the music that plays in the background just complements that snowed-in feel that you get, which I really like. But anyways, that's all aside the point. Let's go ahead and now take on the shrine, and then continue from there. And with this shrine being in Rito Village, it obviously will have a theme to it, that being wind. Yes, ride the winds. This was similar to Breath of the Wild with how the shrines that were located around Rito Village also had wind elements to them. So it's pretty cool that in Tears of the Kingdom we're getting the same kind of concept, but we can really see how this game has kind of added to what Breath of the Wild offered, as here is something completely new since we can dive down below like so, and voila, that should pretty much do it. Let's just go ahead and let the wind slowly guide me to my destination. And just like that, we have completed the shrine. Yeah, super easy. Just kind of like a tutorial showing you how to make use of the gusts of wind as that's going to come in handy a lot throughout the Rito Village quests that we're going to be doing. So anyways, let's go ahead and obtain this light blessing and then head back to Rito Village and see what's up. But yeah, as mentioned, I really love the vibe this village gives off when it is snowed in, even though to the Rito, it's actually causing them a lot of trouble, and they want to prevent that. So we're here to help them out, even though if it was really up to me, I'd rather keep it snowing. But yeah, let's go ahead and pick up this Korok seed and do what we normally do, that is bop them on the head. As you know, that Korok deserved to rock on its core of its head. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, let's go ahead and now ascend our way up as, yeah, we can easily make our way to the village and just start heading up the stairs super easily. And as you can see, there is a shop that sells the Rito set similar to in Breath of the Wild, but I'm not going to need it at the moment and I don't really have the rupees for it, so we'll be fine. You know, the Archaic Greaves already gives me one tier of cold resistance. And then on top of it, I want to rock the Frostbite set as it gives me cold weather damage, which will be helpful uh, with taking on enemies. So yeah, we're going to get another piece of that set later on. But for now, let's focus on Rito Village and some Rito we haven't seen in quite some time. Let's see what's up. That's not fair at all. You know I can handle it. Checking out that huge cloud wouldn't be hard. I could even do it alone. <sighs> if we don't do anything, the village... Huh? Huh? Is that you? <laughs> it is you! Link! Link. They told me you were missing. It's good to see you doing well. <sighs> it's very nice to see you again. Huh. Do you remember my son, Tulin? He's grown taller, though perhaps not yet grown up. Uh. Well, maybe if you didn't treat me like a hatchling all the time. <laughs> as long as you still think you can take on the world by yourself, You'll always be my little chick. Mm. What? You think I can't? I'm already fully fledged, you know? You'll change your tune when I ace today's scouting trip. You all can keep wasting your time treating the Song of Stormwind Arc like it's real, but not me. Listen, <clears throat> you... Unbelievable. Tulin wants me to let him go find what's causing the blizzard, and he's having trouble hearing no. He mentioned a song? Uh. It's an old folk song here in Rito Village. Long, long ago, when we faced a different sort of upheaval, 
The village was saved thanks to a great flying airship. Or some claims, the song that's been passed down through generations. It's a song for children, mind you. Few adults still pair it as if it were true. Still, every now and then, you get reports among the Rito of a flying ship. Combine that with the blizzard caused by the upheaval, and it seems less far-fetched. Even if the Song of Stormwind arc is just a children's rhyme, I suspect that there is something lurking high in the sky. But the air is so turbulent now that no Rito can fly close enough to look into it. This is why we need to make careful preparations to find the truth, but Tulin... He thinks we cling to that song out of cowardice. Huh. But these are Rito matters. You came for some purpose, yes? <clears throat> what? That is terrible news. So then, not even Hyrule Castle is safe? If Princess Zelda's disappearance and the strange phenomena around the world are related somehow, hmm, we Rito would ordinarily love to contribute to your search. But this abnormal blizzard shows no sign of stopping, and food has grown scarce. Everyone I could spare is already out researching the blizzard or scavenging for food. My husband hasn't been able to leave the village much since becoming the village elder. Hmm. I wish there was something I could do. Huh. Ah, but maybe I'm not the one you want. You should try asking Hearth. My friend Hearth has many resources of information, so he might already have a lead about Princess Zelda. You see the two bonfires out that way? He's in the lodge near there, if you'd like to try visiting him. And so begins the quest of Tulin of Rito Village. As yes, Tulin has replaced his father and will be helping us out throughout this game. And speaking of which, let's check out his artwork. But let's not forget his father, Tiba, who is now the new Rito Elder. Tiba helped us out in Breath of the Wild with Divine Beast Va Meadow. And now Tulin is going to help us out with the Song of the Storm arc as we're going to try to understand the meaning behind it and help out Rito Village from the storm that's plaguing them. But it's so cool that Tulin, the little hatchling as they call him, was so cute and small in Breath of the Wild and now has grown up to a badass. I mean, he still is small, but definitely old enough to, you know, fight his own fight. And to me, that is so cool. I absolutely love that. And uh, I'm glad Tebow wasn't completely replaced. He's just busy. With him being the village chief, it does make sense and why he can't help us or leave his village with what's going on in Rito Village. I mean, it's in dire need of help. But anyways, let's go ahead and quickly do this uh, Hudson sign. If you place a yeah giant piece of wood like that, it would do the job. You want to make sure that piece of wood is nice and snug in place. So all we're going to do is yeah pull this piece of wood and attach it. And that should do it as it won't cause the wood to budge when it does fall on it. Um, but it is kind of hilarious how this guy's managing to stay in the cold uh, with such little... Uh, covering him, but he does mention that he did eat a cold resistance type food that is helping him out, which we're also going to do when it does get too cold for us. Luckily, we're fine, but um, yeah, in general, I really do like the kind of progression we're getting with Tiba. It is sad. I know a lot of people probably would have preferred Tiba to help us out, but having his son replace him is pretty cool, and we're going to learn how badass Tulin really is and how uh, he actually is pretty much the strongest Rito warrior. He is the chosen one. He is the anime protagonist, essentially, of the Rito. And uh, he even acts like one with how he's not afraid of anything and just wants to, you know, take on enemies and, you know, just be ahead of everybody and do things by himself. I do like it, though. It is a pretty cool, uh, you know, direction for this character. Again, especially when he was just a cute little uh, Rito you know, kid in Breath of the Wild. He has grown up to be a pretty cool badass. So anyways, now that we've made it to the Hebra 
Trailhead Lodge. Let's go ahead and speak to Harth as, yes, he's here with his emo hair. Let's see what's up. Oh. Link, you're all right. I worried after I heard that you had gone missing. What happened? Uh. Ah, so you're looking for Princess Zelda. Sorry to tell you that I haven't heard anything about her. <sighs> Our feathers are full, dealing with a more immediate problem. Everyone from the village has left to scavenge for food or to investigate the cause of this terrible blizzard. Hmm. <sighs> And all that has been hampered by the sky monsters that seem to be everywhere. We're spread too thin to deal with them properly on top of everything else. Sorry, bud. Wish I could do more for you. Oh. Though, now that I think of it, maybe Tulin could help. <laughs> oh, right. You weren't around here for it, but... Little Tulin has developed a way with wings that puts the adults to shame. Even in vicious weather, he patrols the skies and reports all kinds of useful information. Oh. His wind gust technique is something to see. None of the rest of us can pull it off. Even Stern Tiba acknowledges that Tulin's skill is a cut above. Mm. The kid does preen about it more than he should, but, well, it's worth asking him at least. Last I saw him, he was with Gissing and Lysa on a trip to find food. I think they were on their way to the Hebra South Summit Cave. That's to the northeast from here. The cave is past the cliff out front and up the mountain road. There should be a bonfire marking the spot. Ah. Find the bonfire at the mouth of the cave, and you'll be on your way to finding Tulin. Alright, let's do exactly that, as he's busy, busy, busy. Yeah, I missed Tarth, as he was like the weirdest looking Rito, because he had very human-like hair. It was just this emo swoop. Uh, but, yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and now make our way up here. As you can see, there are ladders for the chumps. For the noobs, and then there's a uh, way you can just ascend upwards if you're more comfortable with the game and will remember to use that. I do love how actually throughout the game there's so many scenarios like that, um, and you could just use ascend. But as you can see, yeah, there's a tower up there, and I want to get that first as we're running in areas of the unknown as it's not marked on our pura pad. So let's go ahead and get the tower first before we continue making our way up. And then we'll make sure to reach Tulin and the cave and all that jazz. But yeah, we do want to first um, activate this tower as it will be of use to just get a general gist of where we're going and have access to be launched into the sky and get a better view on everything underneath us. As yeah, the towers are more than just maps of the areas, they also are launch pads that just give you insane altitude. But Anyways, as you can see, there's a Rito at this entrance, and yeah, this cave happens to be blocked by some rocks. Luckily, we do have a few rocks, or if you do have a makeshift hammer, you could easily open it up. This is for a side quest. Uh, sadly, with how a lot of side quests work within this game, they're not really that worth it, as yeah, this, the blocked cave will really only give you uh, like 20 rupees, I believe, for helping him out, but all you want to do is open it up for him, and uh, that will be it. But you know what? Screw him. Let me actually enter it, as we should also be able to get a bubble frog, as uh, you know, those are all throughout. Um, the uh, caves within Hyrule. You'll find one pretty much in every single cave, so you always want to check for one when you enter uh, any cave. They're usually uh, on the ceiling, like sometimes they're hard to spot, but here it should be easy, and let's make sure we grab these bombs to replenish the two bombs I used to open up the cave. But, as you can see, yes, there is the bubble frog. Let's get ourselves our uh, bubble gem which uh, we will learn about soon. It's actually a really cool concept. Obviously, we know it's connected to the Lord of the Mountain and the Bloopies, but um, yeah, we'll just put that aside for now. Let's just pick it up. And uh, while I can head back out the cave and then pick up my reward, 
We'll do that later. Let's just focus on the matter at hand. I don't really care about the 20 rupees here. Uh, don't worry, we're going to do all the side quests within the game, and that one's pretty much done, so I don't have to worry about it. I just need to pick up my reward. But anyways, as you can see, by ascending all the way up, we were able to get a decent amount of height to then make our way to the tower, as the tower is blocked by a lot of... Um, and you can see yeah, he's still down there. I'm going to ignore him. But um, the tower is blocked by a lot of thorns that, uh, you know, are just surrounding the tower. And while you can just easily burn it, uh, I'm just going to not bother and do this. Yes, just glide my way to it. So I don't have to use any kind of uh, fire item that I have on me and burn it. I don't, I don't really care. You know, we were able just to easily make our way here. And now we have the tower, which will actually make finding the cave Tulin's in super easy. Now we don't have to scale up the Hebra mountain trail. But uh, what I also want to do is uh, collect about a shrine or two while we're heading to Tulin, you know, to make use of this route and make use of this tower. Plus, um, you know, we're a few uh blessings of light away from being able to upgrade our stamina into a complete second wheel which i want to do so as you can see there was a shrine right there and there is a shrine over here which i want to go to first but first obviously we have to scan the area we can't do anything at the moment and i love how link looks with uh, the frostbite outfit glowing speaking of which we're actually going to get the next piece uh in just a bit as it is close by to this tower, so we can easily glide to it. And I do want to do that as it's my favorite piece of the set. But as you can see, yes, the Hebra Mountains have been completed. And we can actually see how this giant storm looks like on the map from the sky map. But uh, we'll go to that in a bit. It is kind of hard to see because of the blizzard. And it is generally easier to locate shrines when you complete this entire main quest and then no longer have a blizzard constantly uh, obscuring your view. But it's fine. It should be really easy to reach the two areas we want to go to. So the first area is the shrine over here. As you can see, I don't have the speed or height to actually reach it. But don't worry, as there is some hot air balloons down below that we can use to elevate us up and actually reach the shrine. So we're gonna go ahead and land here. Pretty much from where the tower was, we just went a little bit uh, northwest. And uh, then we were able to find this hot air balloon, which yes, will elevate us all the way up high enough to then glide to the shrine and then pick it up real quick. We'll check out what's going on on the platform below as there is a new enemy type that I do want to take on, but let's do piece by piece as I have a lot planned for this video. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and quickly take on this shrine first and then see what we're going to do uh, moving forward. So let's go ahead and see what awaits within this. And again, like Breath of the Wild, the common theme within the Hebra set of shrines are usually wind or ice-like themes. And this one happens to be an ice one. Uh, but let's go ahead and take out this. Okay, he's already blocking. And yeah, he's shooting the fighter. We do want his weapon as it will help us advance forward. Let's go ahead and uh, I don't want to waste my weapon on his shield and you know, whittle it down. So there we go. We managed to take out that construct. And now I got his flame emitter shield. Nice. So with it, I actually had a spare one from earlier, but who cares? With his, we can easily burn this giant piece of ice block, which is pretty nice. And with the ice that uh, is left from it, we can actually attach it to a weapon. I'm going to attach it to my shield. And actually, let's show off how cool it is, because uh, you can literally freeze enemies if you attach it to your sword or shield. So let me wait. There you go. Yeah, look at that. That's so dope. Um, makes use of, like, actually having ice with you and, and putting it to use like that. I really do like it. But okay, with the stone slab shield, as you can see, there's a giant stone slab if you want to do that. Or if you want to do this, yes, block with the stone slab shield to advance forward. Uh, or you could have just used the giant stone slab and blocked it. But I do like how you can literally use it as a shield and it has the same effect. But okay, let me quickly take out this enemy here as this guy's going to fuse one of his weapons to a rocket, which would do a decent amount of damage. And I don't want to deal with that. Uh, but speaking of rockets, there are plenty of rockets here. It's a great place to pretty much stock up on... Um, 
you know, rockets if you don't want to use any of the ones you have in your Zonai capsule or just generally use a Zonai gacha machine. And either way, we need a rocket to complete this shrine as we're going to go ahead and launch ourselves up Buzz Lightyear style. <laughs> I don't know why, for some reason, I think of Buzz Lightyear when Link launches himself. But regardless, super cool, super fun, easily my favorite Zonai device. And speaking of which, we're going to be able to pick up more right outside. So with this shrine complete, let's go ahead and uh, see what else is on the Sky Island that we've landed on. So yeah, I believe this is like one of the second shrines we've done within the sky outside the Great Sky Islands. Because we've been mainly playing this game like Breath of the Wild, taking on what's on the surface. And I guess like Elden Ring with the few that's down below. But there are no shrines in general to find uh, in the depths. You can only find the light routes, which actually correspond with shrine locations, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it's all aside the point. Let's go ahead and now, because usually near Zonai ruins and islands, you'll always find these gacha machines. There are a good amount on the surface, but they're usually because that, uh, you know, flying island has fell onto the ground that it dropped down the Zonai gacha machine. But yeah, we were able to pick up rockets from that one. Um, and so if we want more rockets, we can easily do that. But I'm good for now. Let's go ahead and now take on this new Zonai enemy. Yes, a flux construct. And I first want to pick up this chest. Once you kill the enemy, you'll be able to pick up the chest as well because it will fall off of him. But I want to pick it up now so I don't lose it nor forget. We got an old map. This map will give us a secret that's in the depths. It's super cool. I love the concept, but we're going to hold that off for later. Let's go ahead and now focus on this flux and avoid its attack and then go crazy on it. There we go. Okay, there's my chance. Now I can attack it. I don't want to waste my Zonite sword though, so I might swap to, yeah. Uh, a different Zonite sword that's actually fused to something. But yeah, let's keep dishing out the damage. Just use our cold weather attack for a little extra damage. I do love that. But now, okay, it turned into a giant cube. We got to go ahead and, you know, make the Rubik's Cube by hitting this uh, weak point. I don't really know what I meant by that. But yeah, we just got to go ahead and continue hitting it until it breaks apart. Uh, overall, with this being a Flux Construct 1, you could already tell that this is the early version of this enemy. It's meant to be weak. It's, you know, it's first version. So it's the weakest version, essentially. And that's why I'm having no trouble taking it on. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and continue attacking its weak point. I don't know what it's doing. It should be, like, trying to attack me, but it's making it way too easy just to mop up and completely destroy it. All right, not bad, but there we go. So yeah, you can find these enemies all over the sky on certain islands. It's pretty cool. And what they drop is a pretty nice thing as you can actually fuse this to one of your weapons. Let's actually use it on a Zonite sword and check it out. It does massively shrink depending on the weapon you put it on, but whatever, I'm happy with it. Anyways, from here, uh, for those following who don't want to get lost, just go ahead and dive. And pretty much right underneath us is where the cave of the next Frostbite set is. And my favorite piece of this set actually lies. So, yeah, um, pretty easy to find. We didn't have to glide too long or do anything. Just right underneath where we had that battle, we can continue on. And you know what? Let me kill this Herblin. Because they do get annoying. They love to chuck rocks at you. And I just don't respect that. So... Okay, uh, let's pick up their drops, but uh, what I want to do now is, well, to our right from the entrance of the cave, there happens to be, yes, a um, area that we can easily bomb, and if we make our way in here, you'll be able to tell by, yeah, how the chest is placed in this nice little area. It's one of Misko's treasures, this being the Frostbite Headdress, and let's go ahead and equip it immediately. Uh, sadly, it's not glowing yet because we're in a cave, so it's not too cold in here. But when we do enter the, uh, you know, outside and are back in the cold, we'll see it glow. And it looks so badass. Obviously, with this being an ice crown and it kind of looks like a dragon. Yes, it's based off of Nadra, the dragon. It even has very similar horns to how Nadra has it. And it looks a lot more like Nadra when you are in the cold and actually have it glowing. And... I do want this uh, feathered edge. I really like it, even though it is uh, withered down and uh, not that strong. But it is a Rito weapon, so I want to fuse it to my Zonite sword and just kind of rock it. Because, you know, we're doing a Rito mission, so let's rock the Rito 
uh, weapon at least. But I'm going to be rocking the dragon look for the rest of um, this mission as well. I really love how the frostbite set looks. And with the Archaic Greaves, we have a little cold resistance as well to essentially avoid uh, the cold damage. But we'll obviously need to eat something if it gets any colder, as we won't have uh, times two cold resistance. But okay, we got the bubble frog that was in here, and we got the bubble gem we needed from it. But with that, I think it's time to teleport back to the tower as we got what I wanted. And from here, we'll continue on searching for Tulin and doing everything else that we need to do to continue our quest. So from here, we can now see the blue light of, yes, the horn. Look at how cool that looks. Obviously, the second I enter this tower, it stops, but it should glow once again. Yeah, there we go. Now that I'm up in the sky. Yeah, so dope. I love the blue aura it gives. There are other elemental uh, dragon looking armor pieces like this within the game that we can get in different regions and I can't wait to get them and show them off, but that's for uh, a later time, of course. We're focusing on Hebra and the Rito, so we're gonna be rocking this one. But as you can see, there's a shrine real close. I already pointed this one out when we first activated the tower and believe it or not, this shrine will actually make it really easy to find. Yeah, if we look below, but I'm not. I'm going to focus on Link. Um, yeah, we'll be able to find where Tulin is. You can see the bonfire over there in the mouth of the cave, as uh, Hearth has mentioned. But yeah, let's first take on the shrine, and then we'll continue with the search for Tulin, as uh, this is in our way, and why not take it down real quick? All right, let's see what lies within this one. And this should be, okay, aid from above. Super simple shrine, actually. Uh, this kind of reminds me of how I mentioned earlier. If you remember the Ascend ability, the game is so much different. As if you forget about it, there'll be a lot of things that could be difficult to you uh, because the logical answer would just be to Ascend, but you might not be thinking about it. It happens with uh, you know people who are new to the game. It was something that took me a little bit of practice to get used to as once I got comfortable with Ascend and wanted to use it all the time, uh, yeah, I just became second nature, and then I never got stumped on puzzles that required Ascend. But, yeah, I ignored the chest. I don't really care for that. I'm just going to quickly complete the shrine. As you can see, super straightforward. The only hard part, if you want to consider it, is this one, as there's no way you can jump, you know, past that set of, um, you know, beams. You know, it will catch you. But, yeah, if you Ascend, you're done. And just like that, that completes the shrine. So, super easy. And like I said before, if you have a send on the mind, uh, yeah, we'll make a lot of certain things that might seem undoable, very simple. Um, so that's a good, great example of it, if anything. But okay, with that light of blessing, now let's leave the shrine and continue on. And as mentioned before, the cave that Tulin is said to be in happens to be located right here. So yeah, activating the tower and then heading to the shrine is probably a lot more convenient than just heading up the mountain trail and then reaching this cave. And it's easier to spot when you're high up like this. So altogether, we got a lot done and we reached our destination all in one. And here is the Hebra South Summit Cave, as mentioned by Hearth. But okay, this cave here is filled with vines that have thorns on them as well. We're going to ignore all of that and just continue through as, uh, yeah, they told us that they're here looking for food. If we couldn't tell by that female... Uh, Rito, she actually is by a lot of the food supply that they got, and there happens to be more up ahead, which we'll figure out, but, um, yeah, this cave is pretty straightforward. There is one thing I don't want to forget about it, though. Like I said, with most caves, there is usually a bubble frog within them, so I want to make sure I get that before I leave the cave, but, yeah, with that horror blend dead, here is, uh, where Revali's Gale will come in handy. Like I've shown off in the last video, there is a natural way to do Revali's Gale, and that is next to a fire. It could even be a bonfire, but any kind of fire, just light it up like so. And if you have an acorn, luckily these barrels do have some pine cones, I mean Hylian pine cones. So if you do have a pine cone with you, you want to go ahead and chuck one in just like so. And yeah, there we go. We got Revali's Gale working as it gives you an upwards draft. And here, is actually where the bubble frog is. It's gonna jump and, okay. I, I don't know why, I just prefer doing that than burning the vines. Again, that might be the easier method for you, 
but uh, I love the shield surf jump as it gives you that extra bit of air to do some pretty badass stuns. Let's do it again on the way out. But yeah, that was the bubble frog that I wanted to make sure I grabbed before leaving. Let's go in and jump again. Nice. I uh, managed to do it. Whoa, okay. Some of those uh, sticky lizards as they are actually super beneficial if you're trying to climb during the rain and icy areas. But I'm going to ignore them for now. Let's just continue onwards as uh, we... Yeah, pass through more vines and uh, another sticky lizard. Uh, usually to get them since they run away quickly is just to kill them with an arrow. But again, that's all aside the point. Let's go ahead and keep moving. And <gasps> there happens to be a Rito up here. But where's Tulin? Oh, that Tulin, huh? Let's see what's up. What are we going to do with that boy? It's just like him to fly off on his own and leave all the food we collected behind. Oh. Well, I'll be. What is the Hylian doing all the way up here in such a fierce blizzard? You here to talk to Tulin, huh? You just missed him, unfortunately. Our task was to scavenge food in this area, but we just saw a flock of monsters fly past outside the cave. The same ones that have been sighted around the village lately, in fact. I told the others we should return right away to report them, but Tulin clearly wasn't listening at all. He said, I'm going to follow them back to their nest, and flew off alone before I could protest. If you leave the cave and head north, you can spot the Lone Cedar Tree on Talon 2 Peak. That's where we saw the monsters. No doubt Tulin followed them there. I know he thinks he's unbeatable, but he really shouldn't be taking these chances. So yeah, Tulin really does think he's an anime protagonist with plot armor and just generally the strongest one to be able to take on anybody ahead of him. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. I mean, I love his confidence, but yeah, he, he's really fitting into that anime stereotype a bit much. But anyways, now that we're outside of the cave and we got some ice fruit, which is pretty cool. Um, I really like the way they look because they look like crystals. But as you can see, we made it pretty high up from this cave alone. And the goal is to continue heading upwards as we want to reach that lone cedar tree as... Uh, we were told as, yeah, Tulin happens to be up there, which is just continuing upwards from this mountain here. So I'm going to ignore the enemies and we're just going to keep heading upwards. We can see these cool structured ruins that are, have made their way on to the mountain surface here. And uh, yeah, we're going to use them as uh, convenient ways to head up as if we do consider ascending. And yeah, we just need to find an area that's... Uh, not too far to where Ascend won't reach, but yeah, if we do that, we can easily head up like so. And now we're not too far from Tulin, but actually, okay. Yeah, there happens to be a Bacoblin within here. I like the way he kind of froze like a caveman or something. And you know what? I'm going to free him just because it's pretty hilarious and I do want to show it off real quick. But yeah, there's literally a Bacoblin. You're not going to get something you want from this dude as he'll attack you. But I burnt him a little bit too much. Uh, I was just trying to free him out of the ice, but instead I... Yeah, completely burnt him to crisps, but whatever. Anyways, now let's continue upwards as, yeah, Tulin shouldn't be too far from here. We just need to climb a little bit more. Um, there are other pathways to head to, but this is kind of the most convenient. We just need to keep climbing, ignore everything else. And just like that, we have reached the Lone Cedar Tree. And, yes, Tulin awaits. Should have kept my guard up, huh? Okay, let's see what's up with this little guy. Stupid monster! Well, Link, where did you come from? What happened? Oh, uh, you see? That rotten monster took my good bow! See? That's the bow napper! I've gotta get it back! Help me out, Link! Sure. Really? Thanks! Did you know I can blow a strong gust of wind anywhere I feel like? I'll do it for you too. That way you can glide over to where that monster went. Just tell me where you want to point the gust and I'll make it for you. 
And essentially, this is the new type of champion abilities within this game, as we get Tulin's Power of Wind, as we can now have him help us while gliding in air to give us a burst of speed. This is honestly better than Revali's Gale, as I did mention you could do Revali's Gale naturally within this game, and also with how this game you have to glide so much, it's much more convenient than just elevating yourself upwards. So I love it, but anyways, let's get Tulin's bow back and see what's up. Ha! Oh. There we go. I owe you big time, Link. Without you, my bow might have been lost for good. Uh-oh. There's more of them. All right. They're not gonna make a fool out of me twice. Let's go get them together. And yes, not only does Tulin help us out with the power of wind, but he can also help us with fighting. As yeah, he'll literally shoot for you and I love the AI within this game as they follow you and just generally help you out within battles. And just like that, we made quick work of these Bacoblins. <laughs> we did it. Hey, look, I think this might have been a hideout for those monsters. Oh? Hmm? Was that the wind? It couldn't have been. There is no way. Must have been something else. Oh, hey, Tulin, Link! Huh? huh? Oh! Oh! That was some impressive teamwork, you two. <laughs> oh, you saw that, Heart. Talk about embarrassing. I didn't listen when Gesson tried to stop me. I thought I could handle it. But I just ended up losing my favorite bow to those stupid things. I thought I was fully fledged, but there's probably no way I could have gotten it back on my own. Hmm. I bet now you see why we were treating you like a small chick. Yeah... You were right. It really is important to work as a flock. I think I finally get what Dad has been trying to tell me all this time. Is that all there is to the story? It seems unlike you to let your bow be taken, Tulin. Oh yeah, funny story about that. There was this whole thing with Princess Zelda. I spotted her getting attacked by a monster. It was such a surprise that I dropped my guard and it stole my bow. But I guess she was fine because then she zoomed up above that cloud. Uh -huh. What? Princess Zelda flew above the cloud? How can that be? Hmm, seems like a stretch. But we're not going to get to the bottom of it sitting around here. Uh -huh. Tulin, Link came out here looking for Princess Zelda. You should go with them and investigate the cloud you say the princess soared into. <laughs> huh? But I thought I wasn't allowed. Uh. I got a report before coming here. We think it's likely that the blizzard is coming from inside that cloud after all. <sighs> I want to see for myself as soon as I can, but the strong winds make any approach from the sides impossible. The only way in is through the top. But there's not a Rero alive capable of crossing the stormy sky and making it all the way up there. Well, except for one. Uh. I'm talking about you, Tulin. Only you have the skill and training to create gusts at will. Tulin will be the finest reader warrior of all once he understands the value of working with his allies. Oh. You know who said that to me? Your old dad, Tiva. Huh. Dad said that? Oh. Yep, and I'll make sure he knows what you accomplished here today. Now, it's time you go with Link and find Princess Zelda and whatever is causing this blizzard. <laughs> no problem! The two of us together got this! <laughs> I saw Princess Zelda up the Sky Islands near Hebra Peak. Let's check there first. Oh. Link, Tulin, we're counting on you.
Okay, and just like that, we are teaming up with Tulin. And we're going to make our way to the top of the Hebra Mountain, reach its peak, and start making our way to the Sky Islands. This is so cool. And I love how we can team up with Tulin. He has become such a badass. And uh, clearly he is the strongest of the Rito. He is that anime protagonist, the chosen one, as literally they say that. Like, with him being the strongest of the Rito, the only one that can make his way all the way up there. Not even his father can do so, which, uh, yeah, says a lot, because we thought Tiva was a true champion descendant. But anyways, uh, there's a Zonite sword. I kind of want that, actually. We'll just save it for later. Uh, but okay, with Tulin with us, let's go ahead and have him, uh, yeah, just help us out by not only taking down enemies, but giving us that gust of wind that we need. And our goal is just to reach Hebra's Peak. It should be pretty simple if you go ahead and just try to make your way up these um, certain ruins that have fallen onto the peak. It makes it really easy to climb this mountain, much easier than normal. As you can see, we're pretty much almost there. There's a couple more all the way over there, so we're going to continue onwards. But... Yeah, I'm loving this concept. Uh, this is so much better than how Breath of the Wild only gave you the champion abilities. Not only after they died, but you could only use it yourself. You know, they were like spirits, and you didn't actually have them join you. In this game, you're going to kind of have both. You can have them join you, but you will also have their spirit in a sense later on, if that makes any sense. You'll see what I mean when we get there. But uh, let's go ahead and quickly take out this guy. He doesn't mess with us. Okay, well, actually... I just destroyed both of my weapons on him. He doesn't seem worth it, but whatever, whatever. Let's just kill him. Hopefully, he'll give us something. Okay, the bow fell, but at least we got ourselves a uh, construct horn and some zone charges. Not bad, but okay. Let's go ahead and continue climbing up. The easiest way would probably be just to climb up like this, but yeah, Tulin is just so cute the way he's just joining us, flying next to us. I love him. Uh, like, he's just so cool. Uh, in my eyes, I guess it would have been cool to have Tiva, but I, I don't mind having his son instead. I think it's a pretty cool change in direction, and he's really the only champion within this game that uh, doesn't, uh, you know, stay the same as in Breath of the Wild. As the four that helped you reach each Divine Beast, we're pretty much going to team up with them again, but... Uh, Instead of it being Tiva, we're having a son. But to me, that's close enough. You know, it's in the bloodline. We still meet Tiva. Um, so I'm fine with it. And again, I think it's kind of cool that we gave the young um, Rito warrior a chance. And he is the best. I mean, he is literally chosen for some reason. And we're going to learn more about his destiny as we continue on and make our way up here. But okay, uh, we killed this Arrokuda. I absolutely hate those enemies because they're so annoying when you're in the sky, but whatever, at least they die in one hit. Anyways, as you can see, whoa, okay, I didn't mean to slip. That's kind of weird. I don't know why the game's doing that. There's nothing to slip on, but anyways, let's go ahead and speak to this reader warrior and see what's up. If only it were possible to find out what's inside of this blizzard. Well. Aww. Why, if it isn't Tulin, I was too focused on the cloud to notice you. But if you've come here, that means... Oh. Yep, they said I could go up there. Oh. I knew it. Something told me you were the best one for this mission. Everyone has admired your wind gust technique since you first demonstrated it. Ah. You may be the only Rito capable of rising above the cloud to find the truth among the turbulent skies. Give it your best shot. I'll be here watching for your return. Uh -huh. Thanks! Between Link and me, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, the game is really trying to ham in the fact that Tulin is the chosen Rito, okay? Uh, but it's still nice to hear nonetheless. But okay, so now it's time for some platforming as, yes, we're going to use Tulin to reach these islands that happen to be in the sky to continue heading upwards and reach the giant uh, hurricane that's going on. It is such a cool concept. This is like uh, the replacement of trying to uh, ride the Divine Beast, like how Kiba helped us fly alongside the Divine Beast and take out its cannons to uh, remove its barrier and then enter it. This is essentially this kind of quest to reach the upcoming temple at hand. And uh, essentially what we're doing is we're just teaming up with Tulin and we need his abilities, of course, to uh, propel us 
forward and reach the top of the hurricane by using these islands here that are just floating in the air um, to continue heading upwards. So yeah, Ascend is also going to be very useful as you can see. So it's not only Tulin that helps us do this, we literally need to Ascend. It just proves how powerful of an ability this actually is and how much it changes up the game. Like, yeah, without it, you wouldn't be able to do stuff like this. But yeah, this is the rising island chain. So it reminds me a lot of like a Mario level with how it's just floating islands within the sky that we have to traverse. But anyways, hey. Link! It was around here that I saw Princess Zelda. Hmm. But now I don't know where she could have gone. Huh? What is that? Huh, it looks like the Song of the Storm arc was true. As, yes, there are flying ships within the sky. So let's see what Tulin has to say. Huh? Look at that. It's a boat. Oh. Huh? Come. Come. To me. Whose voice was that? Was it coming from somewhere up there? <gasps> Do you see that thing inside the cloud? Is that another boat? But it's huge! There's tons of those little flying boats too. You know what it reminds me of? Hmm. A line of ships soaring, built as a passage skyward. The god ascended to heaven, leaving behind an ark. This whole thing is just like the song of the Stormwind Ark. Oh. Was that children's song true after all? You heard that strange voice too, right Link? I'm sure I heard it say, Come to me. It's like it was calling us up there. I don't see anything around here that would lead us to Princess Zelda. Maybe she went over to that ship? <laughs> well, nowhere but up. Come on. Okay, so yeah, there's nowhere but up, as Tulin mentioned. And yeah, we got a long trek ahead of us as we have to head all the way up. But how are we going to be able to reach up? Well, Ascend is very useful. That won't do the trick. Oh, well, believe it or not, these boats here, yes, have trampolines on them that literally shoot Link up and will make uh, heading up there real easy. I actually love this concept. But anyways, there is a shrine right up ahead, and while I do want to take it on, you are gonna need arrows for them. So if you don't have arrows, instead of leaving this area entirely and coming back, you can actually find, yes, a bundle of five arrows within this chest. I really advise getting that, as uh, I do remember when I first played this game, I didn't have arrows when I came here, and I had to literally leave and come back, but you don't have to. Luckily, there are plenty of arrows. And actually, within the shrine, there are even more arrows, which will be pretty convenient. So we're gonna pick up all of them and take it on. And as mentioned, while there are arrows within the shrine, you will still need an arrow to even start the shrine. And what I mean by that is, yeah, you gotta hit the switch. It's almost like the game is letting you know, yo, you can't do the shrine without arrows, so we're not gonna let you even start the shrine if you don't have an arrow on you. But uh, luckily we can pick up the arrow we just used as it just hit the switch. And if you don't hit an enemy, um, you can easily pick up the arrows that you use. So if you miss enemies, you can re-pick them, them up. That was something that we could already do in Breath of the Wild, and luckily it's still within this game. But okay, speaking of arrows, actually this is an archer type construct, and I do want to kill it because usually they hold not only the bow that they drop, but they also give us a decent amount of arrows on top of it, and I can use the bow since I just broke one. But yeah, there we go, we got another a uh, couple arrows with us, not bad. And now let's go ahead and yes, use these boats here as trampolines to make 
us head higher up. And um, as you can tell, that you do take no fall damage as long as you land on the trampoline. It will negate the fall damage, so you can just dive, which is super badass. Obviously, you want to be careful doing that because if you miss, you'll fall. And speaking of missing, yeah, I'm not going to reach that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to this boat's trampoline and then uh, have it bounce me back up. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab this chest. It would be nice to have Tulin's gust of wind within here, but obviously Tulin can't accompany us within shrines. Similar to Breath of the Wild, you couldn't use the champion abilities within shrines as it would break the uh, shrine, you know, it'd be too easy to solve. But yeah, normally I ignore chests, but like I said, since there are a decent amount of arrows and I just generally want them, uh, I thought I would grab that chest at least. Even though it is, again, kind of meaningless if you have the arrows for them, I needed it. And speaking of arrows, we're gonna have to use one to shoot onto this switch, which will then open up, yes, this pathway, which is pretty much the end of the shrine. So let's go ahead and now dive down, make our way here to this trampoline, have it bounce us, and just like that, yes, the shrine is completed. And uh, now we can continue on with the uh, rising chain of sky islands. I really do like it and just generally have Tulin accompany us. Uh, altogether, like I said, I love this quest. Uh, it's a great start before the actual objective at hand. But yeah, generally, I really like this kind of quest here, you know, teaming up with Tulin on the rising island chain and uh, yeah, having him accompany us to make our way through here as we literally need him to do this. But look how cool it is to have him walk besides us and behind us. Like, yeah, I'm getting some RPG vibes from other video games having, you know, like a character with me. It's so cool. And yeah, I'm glad Zelda has done something like this. This is something I kind of wanted in Breath of the Wild. And yeah, I'm happy at least we got it within the sequel. So, okay, as you saw, I needed his gust of wind to reach that first platform, but we were fine reaching this one. And now let's go ahead and take out this construct. Use the cold weather damage that I have, you know, let's put it to use. Okay, well, even though Tulin is helping, he kind of knocked him out of my attack there, but it's fine, we killed him. Let's go ahead and pick up uh, its drops and now we can move on. But yeah, luckily with the Frostbite set, we're gonna make good use of it since it is cold throughout here. And I feel like I have to use this set since I'm in the cold doing this main objective. Um, so yeah, I'm loving it. But obviously I need the Archaic Graves because it is a bit cold here and without them, I wouldn't be warm. Uh, it will get colder as we head upwards, but we could always, you know, use food to supplement that and, uh, you know, not really worry about wearing another piece of attire because, again, I want to keep rocking at least a headdress and shirt of the Frostbite outfit. Um, but anyways, so, yeah, what we're going to do here is ascend upwards as we do want to head higher up to a platform uh, really high up to continue reaching another one of these, uh, you know, chain sky islands uh i for some reason keep miswording the proper name i believe it's called rising island chain right or something like that but who cares you get my point it's just a bunch of sky islands now we're gonna reach here as you could tell by that archway and um yeah let's go ahead and keep going yeah for some jumps you need tulin's gust of wind or you're not gonna reach it in time uh without you know dropping too low but sometimes you can reach it you know usually when it's on cooldown uh yeah i'll make the jump but if i need it tulin's gust of wind i'll wait for it to come off cooldown but okay let's go ahead and again use our cold weather attack just to easily take out that enemy um and then i kind of want to fuse yeah my weapon together why not just have a little extra damage while we're here let's go ahead and we don't really need the gust of wind here like i said some jumps you don't need them so i'll save it because i do want to break this uh piece of ice so we can drop down onto another one of the boat trampolines and then continue onwards um so there are multiple things we can do here as you can see there is a boss another one of the construct fluxes but I'm going to ignore it for now because we already took one on within this video. And I want to focus at the matter at hand and not really uh, stray away until at least we find another shrine that will serve as a checkpoint, you could say. But okay, let's keep going. As you can see, all I need to do is just reach any area that connects to another set of islands. Like I said, it reminds me of like a Mario game, but with a lot more freedom. 
Um, because in Mario, you'd only be able to, like, you know, follow that linear path in a sense. But this, you could just jump away and go anywhere. But, okay, we got some more of those Aerocudas. Uh, like I said, I hate them. Hopefully, they don't target me, but we're just going to keep going. And yeah, this is just such a cool vibe. Like, I love this. We're in the heart of the storm, slowly reaching it. Again, with uh, a Rito Warrior by our side. Like, I don't know. I just love the way Nintendo made this. And overall, how it is almost like a platforming section. It literally makes Zelda feel like it's, it's like so many genres in one. Like, we know the puzzles. We're reaching the... Uh, end goal is to reach the puzzle area of the game, you know, it being the dungeon, the temple. But along the way, we have this long pathway that just seems like a platforming section that we have to get through. Now, I'm going to ignore these enemies, and the reason why I decide to ascend up here is because this bridge would actually start breaking if you walk on it. So that's why I decide to avoid it. Let's go ahead and again use the cold weather attack to make work of this construct. Pick up what it has. Uh, but I, I should just honestly avoid the constructs because it's just going to waste some time. And they're not really dropping anything that special. So, yeah, as you can see, there are a couple ones up here. And they actually have time bombs. This is similar to the uh, gacha machine that we uh, messed with as they literally gave us time bomb capsules that we have in our Zonai devices. And, yeah, that's what happens. It will blow up. It would probably kill us in one hit with how little HP we have. So I'm not going to bother. I'm here to continue upwards, of course. And what we need to do here is make ourselves a hot air balloon. Luckily, we have the equipment for it, so you don't have to worry. You won't be stopped in your tracks. Just grab the flame emitter, attach it to a hot air balloon and a platform to actually stand on. And just like that, we'll be able to have it elevate us upwards to reach the next part of this. And whoa, 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 okay. Well, good thing we're up there because, yeah, he was about to hit us. Tulin was making good work of him. I love how, yeah, the AI actually fights for you. They're of use. Uh, not only do we have, like, the Hylian NPCs, we literally have the Champion Descendants or even the kid of the Champion Descendant. And we're going to figure out their role as their role is much more important than just a Descendant, as you'll see soon. But, um, yeah, okay, we made our way up here. Let's continue on. We're almost there. At least we're almost to the next checkpoint. As um, if for some reason you're not confident in completing this and you might need uh, some kind of break or something, you know, more food, resupply on something, then you'll be fine. You just got to head a little bit further and then we'll be able to conveniently teleport back here if we desire. Well, I could use this boat to uh, shoot me upwards. Luckily, I can make it easily with just one nice of uh you know burst of wind by Tulin, and then yeah one more jump and just like that we have reached the shrine but it's a bit cold up here so this is my first time flying this high the air is pretty cold up here huh i'll be fine but what about you link make sure you don't freeze okay and yes this is where we need additional cold resistance as it is real cold up here and the archaic greaves won't just do the job so let's go ahead and eat this spicy tomato mushroom stew that i believe i got from a side quest but obviously it only gives us five minutes and 30 seconds of cold resistance so it won't last long enough to complete everything up ahead but luckily with the shrine right here we'll be able to open up a checkpoint so we can easily teleport back here as uh, i'm gonna leave once i take on the shrine to then prepare for the matter at hand but um luckily with this shrine being all the way up here it's actually a blessing shrine as it's pretty much rewarding us for getting up here and again serving as a checkpoint if we want to come back so let's go ahead and quickly pick up our reward because yeah it is nice that this is a raru's blessing shrine and again, I love the way the blessing shrines within this game look. Way better than they did in Breath of the Wild as you got the cool infinite Zonai aura in the background. And we got a large Zonai charge. Not bad. Uh, I've been kind of saving those. Mainly only using the charges for the gacha machine. But uh, yeah, you can use them to increase your battery and whatnot. But we'll look into that later. You know, we'll just focus on the objective at hand. So let's pick up this Light of Blessing, which leaves us with one more to upgrade our stamina twice. So let's look for that. 
So yes, while we can leave, obviously this is the final stretch of the Rising Island Chain. As yes, as you can see, there are tons of boats ready to be used as ways to launch us upwards. So our goal is to reach that over there, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a turn and actually just dive all the way down there. As believe it or not, if we do, We'll find ourselves another shrine. And like I said, I am missing one shrine to get my eighth light of blessing, which then will allow us to complete our second stamina wheel. So yeah, as you can see, it's really easy to find, even though, yeah, the hurricane makes it hard to traverse the skies of Hebra. If you just head down from the shrine we just got all the way down, you'll find this shrine here, which uh, is by the secret hot spring. But we're not here for that. We're here to take on the shrine and get this next light of blessing. So let's do so. All right, this mission here, as you can see with how Link has removed his outfit and no longer has weapons on him, is one of the challenges that require you to only use the items that you're given within the shrine. I really love these shrines because it doesn't matter at what point you're taking them on within the game, they always give you the same challenge. I mean, I guess if you did have more hearts, it'd be a bit easier, but I'm not afraid of that. We don't have to worry about the enemies dealing damage to us. I'm confident we could easily do this. And, you know, whoever is following, you should also be able to do this if you're confident enough. Because, again, the constructs aren't really much to worry about, especially if you make use of your weapons. Because, as you can see, with these spikes here, we can fuse it on, and now we have a spike broom. And, whoa, I have to be careful there. He was going to try to shock me, but... Yeah, uh, this should be pretty simple. He is using a um, Zonai device that does shock you, so I do want to pick that up. Luckily, they have such good weapons that I'll be able to make use of it. But yeah, with this uh, spiked broom of sorts, yeah, it's actually making it really easy to kill these guys in safe distance. Now, you could have tried to tackle this without alerting all of the constructs, as you can tell by that annoying beeping. It's uh, essentially letting them know that you've been caught and you have to deal with it. It's not really much of an infiltration anymore. We're just literally just destroying everything at hand. Uh, we even have this. Whoa, okay, there is something behind me. Let's ignore that, though. That's just a Zonai device. We could mess with and have it help us out, but let's just focus on these constructs and not have him shoot me down like so. But, uh, okay, our spiky spear, you know, the spiky broom has been destroyed, sadly. So let's use the shock emitter back and, uh, yeah, let's bat him down. And there we go. He said, whoa, okay, what? I did not see you, buddy, but okay, well, you're down too. And just like that, we have completed the shrine. Now, sadly, it doesn't matter what weapons we had on us or what we pick up because our equipment will be returned to us, which means they take away the equipment that we were using just now. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter what you picked up. Just use it for the battle. And just like that, we have now completed it. Not bad at all, actually. Um... Like I said, I really love these shrines, and good thing there's a decent amount of them throughout the game. They remind me of Eventide Island from Breath of the Wild, but, uh, you know, obviously in much smaller segments. <laughs> uh, though still, I, I, I enjoy it nonetheless. But okay, now we have a Light of Blessings in total. Let's go ahead and upgrade our stamina wheel two times in a row and get a second complete stamina wheel to go. So from this hot spring, we're pretty much just going to leave Tulin as if we do teleport outside of Hebra or head to any village, Tulin won't be able to accompany us as his AI won't be able to be in certain villages or just follow you throughout anywhere you go. So yes, he's going to stay behind and uh, look for Princess Zelda in the blizzard. And yeah, we'll let him know when we're back. So let's go ahead and teleport and we'll see him real soon. Okay, the reason why I want to head to Rito Village is because, yeah, not only are we going to upgrade our stamina wheel twice and make a full second stamina wheel altogether, is uh, we're also going to cook, and I don't want to use my portable pot. So let's ascend our way up here. So cool how you could do that, and well, oh, look at that. We're going to scare her. Boo! <laughs> yeah, I love how when you ascend out of nowhere, the NPCs get scared. But yeah, here is the snow quill tunic, and again, while... Um, they would have been of use. Luckily, the food that we're going to cook should do the job. So let's go ahead and make our way first to the goddess statue. Again, I love the way this village looks like when it's snowed in. It's so nice, but sadly, that won't last for long. 
Uh, I love how there's even like icicles coming from the goddess statue. Pretty nice. But okay, let's go ahead and now pray to the statue and get the stamina vessels we need to complete our second stamina wheel. Yeah, in this game, stamina is just so important. Um, and that's why I felt like I had to upgrade these immediately. And I highly advise you do the same if you're following along. Uh, you can always make additional yellow hearts if you really need it. But as you may notice, I don't need them as this area in general within the game is really easy to do. And I believe Nintendo wanted the player to do this very early on. As you can tell, I'm not having any trouble taking on the first main uh, phenomena within the game out of the four, obviously within the four regions. But okay, now with their stamina upgraded, let's go ahead and cook. And actually, let's see if this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and ascend right up here. And if my calculations are correct, the, uh, yes, <laughs> literally the cooking area should be here. How dope is that? Man, I'm loving Ascend. It's just so freaking cool. It's gonna take me a while to get used to it. But okay, let's go ahead and cook these spicy peppers. And yeah, as you can hear, Link is humming different themes, which is really nice. Uh, we got some spicy sauteed peppers. You know, I'll make another one. It gives us a minute or rather 12 minutes and 30 seconds of cold resistance. That should be enough, but... Yeah, okay, nice. We heard the Link's Awakening tune again. I did point that out. I think it's really cool, uh, but that's all aside the point. I just want to hear Link's humming once more. But now, now that we have enough uh, food that will give us enough cold resistance, we're gonna use the sky map to find the shrine that will take us to Raru's Blessing, where we pretty much left off so we can continue into the storm. So yeah, that's why this Blessing Shrine is very convenient, because we were able to literally leave the area, and well, Link, you're back, come on, we've got more investigating to do. Okay, we're gonna do just that, and he is ready to go. So yeah, luckily I do have enough cold resistance to last me uh, this mission up ahead, at least I believe it will last throughout the entirety of this mission. We really only need like 20 minutes altogether. <laughs> Um, and the goal, yeah, is to enter inside the hurricane from the top. So as you can see, we now reached it. At least uh, we're at the height of the, where the bottom of the hurricane is. And now the goal is to reach the very top. To do so, we're pretty much going to use all of these boats with the trampolines and have them launch us up and up as we continue along. Uh, even more platforming. I love, again, how this works. To me, this is so cool. It feels like a genre of its own. The open air feel is played to the max within this mission. And this, to me, is more fun than what's inside the hurricane. You're going to see what I'm talking about when we get there as uh, I've already kind of mentioned it, and you should already know, uh, but it is essentially the upcoming temple that we're gonna take on. Again, this is similar to the lead up to getting inside a divine beast, as you have, uh, you know, the uh, NPC help you reach it, but uh, instead it's gonna be a full on temple. And as you can see, I'm about to run out out of cold resistance, so let's just eat this, because yeah, it's gonna be super cold throughout the entirety of this area as we are super high up and near a giant hurricane. So we're just gonna play it safe, uh, but luckily it should last me, like I said, throughout this uh, entire quest, as I wanna continue using the Frostbite outfit, as even Nintendo in the trailer showed Lincoln Toolin uh, you know, with Link using that outfit. I remember seeing it and it looked so cool and I felt like, okay, when I reach this point within the game, I have to be rocking it as well. And um, yeah, that's why to me it's worth having a cold resistance meal along with the um, archaic greaves and that should do it. So that way I can wear the rest of this outfit, have the cold weather damage and just generally look like a badass because it's gonna continue glowing as long as we're in the cold. And yeah, I just love it, but okay. Now, as you can tell with this stairway, yes, this is the final stairway. So let's go ahead and make our way up the stairway and see what awaits. Yes, this is so cool. It really shows you the scale of this game. As when we see this hurricane from far away, it looked massive. And now that we're right in front of it, you can still tell how massive it looked. And it looks absolutely ridiculous up close. 
Um, yeah, so dope. And now we're gonna go ahead and enter it. It just, yeah, it's so impressive. I cannot believe this game runs so well. Even though it is kind of dipping in frames now that we're at the hurricane, it's still absolutely impressive how it's so seamless and how we're actually able to enter it when we saw it from so far away. So let's go ahead and dive into the storm and see what awaits next time.